I am so grateful to have this chance to do my job, to witness and testify to Harry, who I knew for 25 years. Yeah, out there. Hi. Hi. Um, is there, are there papers anywhere from the time Harry Hay was in New York from 39 to 42, I think? And Joey. was acting assistant, yes. acting executive director of something called the New Yes, I wish we knew more. I want to know more about that time. Have you, have you had I have not. Uh, jo Joey, are you aware? Uh, I might defer to uh, Bettina Affecker, who has been doing research on that, and she's here in New York. Um, I know in the archives in San Francisco and down in LA, I found letters that Harry wrote, but nothing really about the work that he was, was doing here in New York. Yeah. See, here's one of the great questions. Harry left the party to do Mattachine. He did not want what he did with Mattachine to come down onto the party. He never broke with Marxism, and he was loyal to the party to the day he died. So what do we make of this? He comes out of the heart of the American Communist movement, and he starts Mattachine with all the skills and, and theory that he learned. It's, we need to change how we look at communism and how we look at the years of the Popular Front. Uh, and Marxism as well. And this is a point that I got, is that you, Bettina? From seeing you on the internet. You were on the internet machine with your talk, and you made the point. Uh, and that really changed a lot of thinking. Um, I always used to be almost apologetic in a way, talking about Harry's writings. It's so dense and turgid, and then the Marxism. That's kind of, well, they taught me in graduate school that it was outdated. Yeah, your your place. That's what they taught me. Okay. In history. I know. <laughs> the same place. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that, that's what your colleagues taught me back then. Now I'm turning that around and back upside down. If Harry was able to continue to use Marxism to create a idea and organize an LGBT movement, it means that Marxism remained a vital aspect of American intellectual and political life well into the eight, uh, 20th century, late 20th century. Can I just say, yes. the irony of this is that the Communist Party was tremendously homophobic yes. and expelled people who were gay or lesbian, which I'll talk about later you know, in my own work. Yeah, yeah, later. yeah. But um, I just want to thank you for a brilliant, brilliant <laughs> presentation. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you too, Will. But I'm curious as to why, given Harry's very strong opinion, on gender issues, you use the politically correct term that's current today, LGBT, when, not, when, when Harry's gender theory is very strongly, would not have used that language. And I, I just ask people to really honor what Harry actually said and not layer it with what we say today. So why did you choose to use that? Because he used it, he did use it. He used it when there was an occasion, and you know, he was speaking to a broader audience. When he was speaking to gay men, he used different language. When he was speaking about gay men with a mixed audience, he used a different language. Uh, so I, I don't, um, and he used queer. And he kept shifting, that's what's so fascinating. He kept shifting, 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 exploring, poking, never settling down on one thing keeping the idea evolving and changing, but always the notion that we are a cultural minority. We have constituted ourselves. We are now constituted as a cultural minority. Mark. And Will, isn't one of those central traits of that minority is always adopting the shifting, shape-shifting, intellectual shifting? Well, yes, yeah, yeah. No, but in the field of sociology and ethnic studies, it's now a commonplace to understand minorities, even racial, even ethnic linguistic, as culturally constituted and transactional, not in isolation, but in dialogue with other groups. And Daniel's book is just so wonderful because it really shows that our, how our politics today, uh, again, as a coming out in the 70s, I came to understand that first there was uh, black civil rights, then there was feminism, then there was gays. No, wrong. They all are born at the same moment in a place like LA and other places where these people are all talking to each other. 
would, would you care to speculate if uh, Harry was alive today, 2012, given the gains, gains we've uh, made in the gay community, uh, but also in the context of just what's happening in 2012, uh, economically, and et cetera. What, well, what would Harry, the, 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 the radical uh, queen, but also the communist and the full human being that he was, what, what, what would he warn us about? Well, he would, uh, I can tell you, this, uh, he, would say, he would say, watch out. Fascism with an American face is around the corner. Now, as a commie, that was just second, that was in his blood. He saw fascism all the time. But, but I see it now. I don't know that it's coming, but I see beginning to see what its face looks like. And I think he'd be talking about that a lot with the way our politics have degenerated. Um, I think that, uh, I think he would love Glee because here is the gay window. Here is, here is uh, <clears throat> a young girl, a teenager who's in high school and she wants to get married, it's too soon and her two gay dads don't want it. And they have this intense emotional scene and it's, just, it's like something that only happened in San Francisco, but yet it's a human story. I mean, I'm a sucker, I, I cry easily. Uh, I think, I, I'm just very excited about that because for the first time, um, the rest of society is being able to see in our experiences, human experiences. And, and that is a place he very much wanted us to, to get to.